Hello. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was wondering which one of you guys was for the Jesus group. Sorry. Ah. Oh, sorry. A, I was wondering if I could get a card. Thank you. And uh, number two, I was wondering about the uh, possibility, if you might be able to let me know if there has been any uh, direct scientific experimentation or any uh, um, more recent evidence which might present God as falsifiable or as a, uh, you know, in other words, I, I, speaking as a skeptic, I'm trying to understand where, what proof there is for God, um, you know, as I'm still exploring the option. So, so it's mostly indirect evidence at the present moment? No. The creation and the very breath that you're breathing and the very image of God that you created in, okay. which has now fallen okay. apart from God into depravity and into death and into... So one quick question into then. all this other so, Okay, so, so one final, so just one final quick question thought then. Um, we were made in God's image, correct? That's right. So initially, so so the quick question is, are, uh, so the quick question is, are we still in God's image? Are we still in God's image? For the, uh, are we still in God's image as He made us? No. You're fallen. So does that include you as well? Well, yeah, I was. I was okay. As well. Now the now the one other quick question though is that again, um, uh, call, call me a doubting Thomas here, and this is purely for you know this is purely for for uh, for uh, for sake. But the question is is that um, okay. Remember the old remember the old reference back to Moses and the Pharaoh back in ancient Egypt, right? So, and remember how when uh, remember how when the Pharaoh questioned and you know and, and tried to bring in his own magicians for you know contesting God's miracles, the snake came along and basically ate both other snakes. Or you know there were so many you know overwhelming miracles which wound up taking people over, right? Yeah. Now, um, or or um, or another quote: "By their fruits you shall know them," right? Yeah. Now, my question is, considering the scientific method, for the most part, has brought us incredible miracles like electricity, uh, modern medicine, uh, you know, and all this sort of thing, whereas, um, uh, whereas religion, uh, for the most, and I'm just saying in general for the most part, has, its progress rate has been um, uh, less exponential, uh, apparently. Uh, I'm wondering whether or not uh, science in and of itself is still considered a good fruit. And finally, and finally, my, uh, um, sorry, uh, I had, uh, sorry, I just lost my train of thought, I had one other question, but I guess that, uh, um, uh, I guess the, I guess the final, I guess the final, uh, the final fundamental question is, though, is it sort of like, oh yeah, I remember now, uh, why is it that, again, uh, why is it again, then, that, that basically, um, you know, uh, there's a, there's a lot of these large scale magicians right. nowadays, like Chris Angel, etc., who can you know replicate the effects of Jesus, like walking on water, etc. Yet God is not st uh, stepping forward to uh, assuming He exists. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm saying hypothetically, here. assuming He exists, why is He not stepping forward with even greater miracles that are not independent, you know, that are that are not achievable by science or by you know that, that have not been indirect or through man to um, uh, you know to to contest the uh, uh, you know to contest the uh, the, the apparent uh, the apparent miracles brought by the likes of Chris Angel, Penn and Teller, Garen Brown, James Randi, uh, I get and David and I, Blaine. Uh, thank you. And, <laughs> and my one final question is, uh, uh, considering that there have actually been oh, oh I remember my last question now. Um, considering that the, the the Bible is supposed to be the ultimate authoritative source for morality, right? Or you know, or God is supposed to be the ultimate authoritative source for morality. Why is it then that uh, that, that under Christianity, uh, you know, or, or or even under any religion, uh, morality has shifted over the course of the centuries in terms of what was considered moral? For example, uh, I quote that there were uh, there were at least three uh, priests, in the, including the Archbishop of Canterbury, who were who were easily quoted back before 1852, when slavery was still legal in England, that it was actually considered God's will for the white man to enslave everyone else. So I'm, I'm curious as to why it was considered moral then, but the morality shifted. Um, if you know, and, and these were both and, bo and both you know modern day morality, you know, which is you know equality of women and equality of all races. But back then as well, um, you know that, that women, women and blacks, etc., were inferior to men, uh, inferior to white, uh, to white Anglo-Saxon Protestant men. Um, why is it that both of these were considered to be God's moral law um, and guided by the Bible? Um, and, and, and if, these, uh, uh, if, the, if God was the ultimate direct moral force, would he not be a lot clearer in his, um, you know, as, as fallen into depravity and sin? Would God at least not be a lot clearer in terms of how to interpret his word? Like, you know, wouldn't there be more clearer key indexes, that sort of thing? Uh, I mean, is, is this partly due to uh, evolution, uh, when I mean evolution, I mean adaption of, of circumstances changing, or is this due simply, or, or might it be possibly more due to the fact that humanity is, is interpreting a lot more of their own moral law and any entity that might be, you know, any higher, uh, higher dimensional entity or God or what have you, might be less influencing morality? Well, you Don't said it, the Matthew because... Thing. Yeah. 
Well, so they, well, as you pointed, well, that's my point. If humans are if humans are guiding their own moral code, or or developing their own moral code, and are adapting accordingly to new circumstances der derise, deriving, and they seem to be getting up recent, or, you know, reasonably good moral codes, i.e., for example, that everybody is equal. You know, if if the, if if humans are being able to develop their own decent moral codes, how is a god necessary? Uh, or more specific. Um, I'm not saying this as, again, doubting the existence. I'm just simply saying, is the idea of a god maybe a little bit superfluous until such time as we can falsify it under such as a model such as string theory or something like that? Like, you know, could, uh, you know, could a, a belief in a god be put more as a back, you know, on the back burner table and focus on uh, developing a moral code and focusing more on works? Uh, you know, I mean, for example, what is it? Um, uh, living faith is nothing without good works. So maybe focusing more on good works than, you know, putting faith on the back burner until such time as we have a little bit more to go on. Okay, let's hear the answers to these. Sorry, I'm just purely quiet. Just purely asking here. I think Satan is the answer. Well, first of all, if Jesus Christ came down on this earth and started doing miracles, you still wouldn't believe him. Not necessarily. Because, I would no, actually. The Bible that. actually says that. The Bible knows your heart. The Bible knows the hearts of every single one of us that are on this street right now. The Bible claims that you're all lovers of yourselves. We all are. We're all lovers of ourselves. May I say We're something? We're all proud. I'm asking so may, may, so may I say something? Exactly. It says it says in the Bible also that. Satan is like this terrible demon, he'll kill everybody or whatever, but really, in the Bible it says the devil only killed one person, but yet again, God killed like 7,000 or more, you know what I mean? So, and he's not done. So, yeah, but, well, the question is, did he not contribute? Well, strictly speaking, in the Ten Commandments, he explicitly states, "Thou shalt not kill." Now, is that applying to his followers, or does that apply to, uh, or does that apply as a general moral code? The reason I ask it's that not is, a moral code. well, the thing is, well, the thing is, the Ten Commandments are God's law. And the reason why that we're able to make our own moral code is because it's not even a moral code at all. You can't. But none you of us, none of us here, can hold up to our own moral code or standard all we do is lessen it and make things more acceptable okay exactly right life is a big lesson to learn life sets a law as a moral or ethical yeah. command for humanity to live by right should he not be living up to his own moral code Oh, he very much does. Well, then the question is, is that if he vi well, then the question is, is commandment number, I believe it's commandment number seven or eight, thou shalt not kill, then it does not, then does not by, uh, ki by killing the, those, you know, the, uh, and as you point out, he's still not done. Does he not violate his own moral, you know, does he not violate his own law? He's bringing judgment down on sin. Death, sin already has a death penalty. That's been established. Yes, but he'd already put, if it's there's already a curse already... placed on us, and we have a death penalty on us. No, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. Now, understand that we're not, we're not trying to, um, we're not trying to, like, I don't understand, man. Make you disbelieve in your own religion. That's that's not what we're trying that's to do right. at all. You know, 